everybody. We are back to talking about us. So excited. It's probably been too long. You may not have noticed that it's been a long time, but it feels like it's been a long time for us. Yes, it's been a while. Glad we're back, though. Glad yeah. we're back. Yeah. And so we have special guests. This is a super special episode for a bazillion reasons. Yes. We have kind of increased the family. Yes. It's you, a lot more guests here today than usual. Right. But, uh, yeah, we got the family vibes going today. Right. It's, it's almost like a baby family reunion. You find out you got some cousins. Yes. Right. Which is sometimes good because sometimes people have the big families and they don't know and you try to talk to somebody that's a cousin. <laughs> that's inappropriate. But like that's how not, related are we? Exactly. Is that, that's like a third cousin or just a... <laughs> no? Like, can I get away with that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, on today, we have in the building, and we're actually on location too, we should say that. We are ground zero. We're in the house. We, yes. I'm, we're just going to be honest with you. Nephew and I have crashed the scene. Oh, we didn't even introduce ourselves. I am your host, Kimberly Braswell. I'm your co-host, Devon Croxton. And we have crashed the Lindsay household on today. <laughs> and we are doing a dual kind of episode with the Carla White Carey. And she is representing the Effort Hour. So you're getting a two-piece. It's a two-piece. It's a two-piece. Yes. F is for family. family. Yes, it is. I was for a hot second. I was like, what is that for? F is for a lot of things. <laughs> but on today, F is for family. And um, let me tell y'all, and we also have, um, as part of the suite of special guests in the building, we have Michael Lindsay. Yes. How's it going? Yes. Yes. So here's what you missed. Nephew, break down. What just happened at this table before the cameras went live? Yeah, about 10 minutes ago, uh, Chef Michael here just threw down on some flank steak, roasted veggies, uh, mashed potatoes. Garlic. Garlic mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. Not just regular. Garlic butter mashed potatoes. And it was absolutely delicious. Uh, if we fall asleep during the podcast, don't blame us. Uh, it's the food kicking in. It's the uh, itis. It's the itis. Yeah. So we're fighting the itis right now. Mm -hmm. Like, as we speak, <laughs> the mashed potatoes are in my belly. And so hopefully this works out. Yes. Yes. So you're going to see a couple different conversations take place because there's so much juiciness that we have to unpack. Yes. And this story actually starts with the last episode of Talking About Us. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and break that down. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so the last the last episode, we talked about masculinity and fatherhood, uh, talked about how our relationships with our fathers affect how we develop ourselves as men and ultimately how we have families. Um, and now we're going to talk about a little bit of Michael's story and just kind of talk about how the dynamics between your parents affect how you grow up and whether or not you can shape a, a normal and happy family because of those circumstances. Mm -hmm. So just for maybe added detail because the rabbit hole goes so this is straight up matrix red or the blue pill yes and you probably took the wrong pill and so we're unplugging from the matrix now and we're going deep mm -hmm. so one of the things just for context that you should understand is this is not just any guest michael's my brother mm. my brother and so some of these dynamics are ones that yes. we live together. Yes. Right? Um, although maybe not this first part. So mm -hmm. if we can, Michael, can you start by sharing a little bit about, and I don't even know how to ask this. How would you explain your understanding of your father? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, and Michael, one second, even before you start, the red and blue pill situation here, whatever you think a family is supposed to look like because of certain events and circumstances, just erase that out of your head right now moving mm -hmm. forward. Think of it as like a blank slate. A blank slate. Did you say blank steak? Yes, because we just had <laughs> flank steak, which rhymes with blank slate. And you see where my head is at. Because I'm wondering if there's still some leftovers. <laughs> I'm there is. <laughs> there is. Don't worry. Right. There is. <laughs> no, there blank, is. blank slate. Yeah. Because I should have probably let that go, but I did like the slow turn. He was like, and a blank steak. I was like. <laughs> Juicy. <laughs> Word. 
Okay. Yeah, but Michael, you can carry on with your uh, story. Uh, my understanding of my father was is that I. So, he left when I was very young. Um, you know, it's kind of weird because I like I, for a while I didn't know him, but I can remember this day vividly. I can remember him getting down on one knee, looking at me. I can't be five or six, maybe, and him telling me that uh, that me and my mom were going to go, we were going away, and I wasn't going to be able to see him for a while. And uh, so, um, at that young age, I didn't understand what that meant, but. Uh, I didn't see him again until I turned 17. So, um, what's already interesting about this story is that you have, similar to myself and Lindell from our previous episodes, um, young, vivid memories, a long distance of no communication, and then like a recommunication or reconnecting with our fathers. And how, what was that in between period like? So, you mentioned like six to 17. The best way I can explain it is rage. Mm. Just, there's nothing else to it. I was angry at him for many reasons. Um, uh, not being there for me was the big one. I I went through a lot. It, I went to Catholic middle school. I had a, I grew up, I had a bully. We didn't have, as a family, we didn't have much money. So my mother did the best she could with what she had and uh it it was it was every day was a struggle i mean i'm talking about i got up i mean i would walk to the bus that bully got on the bus the same time i did when it got bully i shared classes with him uh when i went home uh the bully was there when i you know i'll go out to play he lived at the end of the block so there was just it was a 24 7 bully session Mm. So you said there was rage when he left. Yes. What was it like before he left? Uh, you know that's that's funny. I don't remember what that was like. But before. can you give the backstory about what you were told or what you were believed that what you were? So maybe let's let's be real. Let's go be one hundred here. Okay. How did our mother paint the picture of what was going on with your dad? Uh, my mother painted a picture as uh, he was a drunk. Um, uh, he wasn't around because he didn't want to be around. And that was really hard because I was like, I don't understand. And it, it made it really confusing when I met up with him years later. Can you tell that story about how y'all met up? Uh, I can. Um, so I am working at a hardware store on a, a Zella Hardware on Ennis Road. You're and, how old? Huh? How old are you? You're 17. So I am working, I'm working there, and then I'm actually covering a break. So I'm actually work, working the register and um, while the cashier's on break and the guy comes up and I can, I'm running the register, I'm ringing people through, but I can feel somebody staring at me. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what that's all about. So uh, he goes back to the back. He gets a couple of things, and he comes up to the register. And I asked him if that was anything he need, anything that defined everything he needed. He said yes. He says, and I know who you are. And I said, okay. He said, you're Michael Lindsay. And I said, who are you? Should I call the police now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is my manager around? Yeah, right. right. I, yeah. Well, I... At that point, I was so angry. I wasn't going to get the manager. I don't need the manager. Gotcha. Mm. gotcha. <laughs> so um, I, he said, I, you're Michael Lindsay. And I said, who are you? And he says, I, I, I know who you are. And he left. And that's how it was. It was like. He didn't say I'm your father? No. What? No. Mm. It wasn't. That wasn't him. That was uh, Brenda's husband. That was my uncle. Wow. He was the one that I actually saw first. Wow. So uh, the very next day, very same time, I'm running the register. Mm. The same guy comes in, except he comes with another guy. Now, the emotions almost took me over because I am staring at a mirror. Mm. It's not like 
are you my father? It's like, you are my father. And so they walk back. Again, I've got a line, so I'm running the register. And um, uh, they go to the back. It's almost like they waited until I had rang everybody through. And they came up. And uh, he said, "I'm." He says, uh, "You know who I am?" And I said, "No," because I didn't. I just didn't want to deal with him. Mm. And uh, he said, "I'm your father." And I said, "Okay." And he said uh, he wrote down his address and his uh, uh, phone number. And he said, uh, "If you ever want to talk, come see me." Mm. And at that point, I did want to talk. I did was gonna go see him. Because I had a lot to get off my chest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. right. So I uh, went there that night um, after work and uh, started uh, I immediately. We sit down. So there went, was no hesitation at all. No, like you mm -hmm. knew that's what you were going to do. Yeah, this is this is exactly. I have been waiting <laughs> twelve years to do this. I knew this is what it was. This was. I've been waiting. This is. It's here. It's game time. And I kind of mentioned that on the previous fatherhood episode where when I reconnected with my father, I had just reached the point where I was mature enough to not lash out out of rage. So it's kind of interesting to hear you say, like, this is that's still raw emotion. You're like, I'm young. I still feel this way. Right. And like she said, no hesitation. I'm going to go see you immediately. Yeah, I did. it was that night. And so I, I we got there and uh, in perfect form, he comes. She's smoking the cigarette and cracks open the beer. <laughs> so, so he showed up as him. He showed up as him. His authentic self. Mm -hmm. He showed up. So I uh I said, I said, well, I have a whole lot of questions. And his response was, uh, uh before you start asking any questions, I'm going to tell you the truth. I will not lie to you. He says, but you're not going to like what you hear. He said, but it will be the truth. He said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, it, it. This has been too long a time coming. And uh, so if you're cool with that, go ahead, fire off. So I have to ask you this. If you can even remember, do you remember what that felt like in that moment? Like you're standing in front of a person who has been, for all accounts, demonized from your mom, who's the only parent you know. Right. And he's saying, like, I'm going to tell you the truth you're not going to like. And I can't imagine what you're feeling in your body. And I can't. Rage. I, I, there, that time, during that whole time, there was nothing but rage. I, I, did, I didn't feel anything else. There was no... Oh, well, I'm too scared to ask him this question. And really, to be honest, when I he asked when I asked him the questions and uh, he he would answer, they were totally 180 from what my mother mm. was saying. Wow. So it just fueled it. It's just like you're lying. You're lying now about my mother, who was the only parent that I had known at that, you know. And uh, he just, he was like, I'm telling you, I'm not lying to you. And I said, you're lying. And we fought all night. I remember, I remember it was dark when I got there and the sun was coming up and we're wow. still arguing. Wow. wow. So it just, uh, he wasn't giving and neither was I. Because so, you're his son. So, yeah. And so I. Um, I have to ask you, brother, was there. Any question in particular where you're like, this is the the most important or one of the most important questions that I need an answer to. And and what I'm really interested in is how he answered that question versus what mommy told you. Like one of those things where you're like, that's a lie. And, and it's like it wasn't. Um, I'm sure there's a lie. You're like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> um. I have to say the one that was the very first question was, why didn't he come back? Mm. Well, you know, I, 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 at the time, I didn't know why he left. Um, I, I, I didn't know why he left. He, um, 
my mom didn't give really a good reason why he left. So it was kind of that was one of the few things that was just really on the hush. Yeah, it was just n nobody could tell me. So I'm like, why did you? Okay, maybe you had your reasons on leaving, but why did you not come back? And uh, he said, I tried. Mm. Wow. And uh, was that opposite of the narrative that she painted? As oh. it, like he never tried to come back. It was never an attempt or anything like that. Not only was that that, but it was almost like when, when as I got older and I couldn't, I won't, I won't say be controlled, but I, you know, I was doing stuff that I probably shouldn't have been doing, and my mom would try to punish me. That was my punishment, was is that she was going to go send me to live with my father. That Ooh, the was, irony, because that's what she did with me. Wow. That, that was the punishment. Wow. The punishment was going to be, uh, you're going to stay with your father and your grandfather, and you're going to have to pick grapes all day, because he lived here in Grove City, in Urban Crest, mm -hmm. and he had a vineyard, and that was my, that was, you know, if I did turn around and get my life together and start acting right, that was was it going to be. I was going to go. She was going so to for 12 years, he was in a close proximity to you, and you didn't know. I I don't, well, I know, I found out much, much later that part of the reason why he had to leave was, uh, well, at least we can surmise, is, is that uh, he robbed a bank. Okay. That would do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that okay. would. Yeah. And Gotta go. <laughs> not that I've robbed the bank, but right. I would guess. <laughs> you know, so, if you did rob a bank. Yeah, right. right. Consequentially, yeah, you right. might have to sit out for a little bit. Right. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, you know, he, but again, I had to find out not 12 years later, but like I only found out recently. Wow. Like, so there are truths that are still coming out. Like I, my, this is my story, but it's not over it. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to piece stuff together that I thought I had a grasp on and I really didn't. So do you do you think that do you still feel maybe and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like do you feel rage now or is the rage now pointed in different directions? Like how do you feel about this now? Because he's not here now, right? And then now you're finding out like the person who you trusted with this story, this is not the correct story, right? And there's no one the person is not here to vet it with, and then the person who you have here is like you lied, right? Um, I, yeah, I, you know, it's funny that, uh, me and my wife were just talking about this. I said, you know, when, uh, when this first started really, when, when I first started finding out the truth, uh, I really thought that this rage that I've been carrying for years was going to be gone and I was actually going to be comfortable in myself or whatever and it didn't it just changed so the rage is still there it's just aimed at somebody else yeah transformed yep. yeah redirected yeah it's just yeah i wouldn't even say transform i say redirected the rage is still there but it's now it's at somebody else yeah it's during during all these moments of having uh, rage and uncertainty and then even going back to having a school bully and all these things, it's a lot of negative pressure and negative emotions. Did you ever find peace in any particular thing or a certain outlet? Because sometimes we look for that type of escape. And did you ever have any form of escape? Um, uh, not until actually, to be honest, not until I got married. Gotcha. What a perfect what segue. A yeah. yeah, yeah. Not until I got married. It, it, I, everything up until that point was just, I was lost. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it is that I was lost. What do you, had you thought, I mean, because I think about us growing up. I think about what we saw in the household and I don't think we had any framework of even understanding marriage. 
let alone positive relationships. We never saw one. Even if you think about like the only relationship we saw that came close to a positive relationship was grandma and grandpa. And she had him in his own servant quarters room. Yeah. In the house. Yeah. Like literally my grandmother had my grandfather in a little room. Like the whole house was beautiful and his room looked like the help. He had a little twin bed, literally. That he got from Goodwill. Yep. Wood carving toys and stuff like that. And one of the things that was heartbreaking to me, because and literally this is our framework for just seeing a marriage. This is the only one we saw. Didn't what did you tell me about when grandpa died and y'all were packing up his room? Okay, so when my grandfather died, uh we me and my uncle were packing up his room <laughs> and we found bottles of Long Island iced tea everywhere. It was in in between his mattress. It was in his car. It was, it, he had a workshop out in the garage. It was there. It was, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. So he's like drinking to, he's miserable. And and that's what, and that was it. And like, we saw that. And that's your example. Yeah, that's, that's yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's this is what a marriage looks like. Yeah. The only example you're pulling from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like for, because like, we were living our lives in that house with, you know, in Agla Green. And, and it's funny when you talk about rage, like, I remember you as an angry child. Like, you were angry young. And all the time. All the time. All the time. And, yeah. And, and now I'm wondering, like, I don't even know. I, you know, I try not to harp on it, to be really honest. I don't. It, that's a dark place. It, yeah. it just is. It's just a dark place. And I have a beautiful wife. I have two beautiful kids. I have a great. I mean, I mean, we're right in right in the middle of the pandemic and my family is flourishing. Yeah. So, um, so question. So that we segue this the right way. How? Like, what thoughts did you have about marriage mm. before you even met your wife? I didn't have any thoughts about marriage. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to get married. <laughs> I mean, that's just... And I'm wondering if that kind of helps. Because if he's not pulling from negative stigmas, from the media, from all these other things about what a marriage is supposed to look like, and just letting it naturally happen and naturally evolve maybe that kind of worked to their benefit. Mm -hmm. Because even too, with your story, mom and dad were not married. Different dads, right? But your, your dad and mommy, they were not married. No, they weren't. Right. So didn't come from a marriage. Didn't see, we didn't see our mom, like, right. (laughs) And then, and then out of all the siblings, you're the one that ended up in a long lasting successful marriage and how does that happen when there were no positive examples to follow no rubric no pathway right not modeled anywhere because what i would imagine especially for a male in a family like that is bitterness throughout life Mm -hmm. like seeing my mom with other men we don't have the same dad and all of that it just seems like that pathway to destruction Mm -hmm. but he turned it around which is amazing I'm excited to hear when you guys do segue, like how what that looked like. Because on paper, you're supposed to be, the, you know, robbing a rebel, banks. Yeah. robbing banks, Continue criminal to be that record, angry black man. exactly, yeah. right, right. Uh, I can't be honest. I can't take all the credit for that. Uh, Jen, my wife, has been extremely, redonkulously patient with me. Because there was when we first got married, it was rough (laughs) and it was rough because i didn't know what a marriage a good marriage looked like what what i eventually started doing was knowing what i didn't want it to look like Mm -hmm. and i knew for a fact i didn't want my kids to be fatherless that was my next question is how did you know because based on what i've seen since i've been here how did you know what a good father looked like? I didn't know what a good father looked like. I Because that's what it looks like you are from what I see just being I, in this space. I did the best I could. I, I I did not want 
I didn't want my child to go through what I went through. And if that meant I had to do whatever it took to not for my child to not be there, then that's what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And again, my wife was has been it is has been will always be the, the rock that I I stand by, you know, to to push on through. Then I mean, I I it, without her, there's there's none of this. Mm-hmm. This Beautiful. that's Beautiful. fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is just that's heartwarming, for isn't me. it? Yeah. yeah, and it's hopeful. Yeah, yeah. like you that's know, the word I was thinking. Yes. it's hopeful yes. because I think we and you know, um, I'm interested for you, nephew, about mm-hmm. listening to Michael's story mm-hmm. about how it intersects with your story, mm-hmm. and I'm curious about whatever you might be thinking about and just hearing Michael's story. Well, like I was just saying, the word hope really came to me because I had a similar experience where I had a lot of anger issues as a young child. And to hear that even despite those things, you can grow and have a positive outcome. Um, because even I was asking Lindell about like his experiences as a father, as someone who aspires to be a father one day. So like hearing these positive examples is crucial, especially when they're, they aren't glorified or they aren't promoted as much and they're not in your face. It's like, like I said, on paper, this... This doesn't add up. Two plus two is six. I'm like, how is that the case? Right, right. Like, please explain. But yeah, um, yeah this, this is hopeful for me. And it gives me a great example of like also not being so anchored to your past. Like even when you make mistakes or like you say, your beginning of your marriage had a rough period. But you've worked through it. You evolved and you grew over time. Uh, and then for the sake of the audience, um, how long have you guys been married together? Uh, 28 years. Wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. Incredible. That's incredible. amazing. There's hope, Kim. We're, we're going to be fine, Carla. <laughs> we're going to be fine. <laughs> I mean, I got scars. You know. I mean, I think it's great to hear um, black men's perspective without the father because we talk about us as women. Yes. And how that has affected us with not growing up with a dad. Yeah. But to listen to the other side of it, wow, wow. And, you know, I wonder, too, before we segue to bring in this whole thing so we start folding in this family thing, Mm -hmm. there was something that you mentioned when we were talking in the former podcast about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's something, you've not said this word, but as your sister, there's something that I've seen in you um, that I don't even know if you notice. And that is like, when I hear you even think through or talk about your dad now, though you're like, still got rage, it's just directed in different places, right? You right. Know? And I get that, right? Because we part of the family, so I know, right? right you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> so right, I know right. what the deal is. However, there is a sense of almost forgiveness that I hear about you regarding your dad. Where it's just like there's some stuff that wasn't his fault. Right. Right. And I, I totally agree with that. There is. I, I don't know. If, I mean, it's not it's not like it's not messy. Right. It is messy. Yeah, it is. It's right? extremely and some messy. Of it, you know, and it is like some of the stuff is just it's not good. Or is it? Right. However, but there's some stuff that actually wasn't his fault. Right. Right. And I and it's so interesting now having context since birth with you, right? Yes. Because I came on the scene, I was just like, we about to be best friends. And you were like, bet you we won't. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know? it, it didn't start off good. It did not. <laughs> it, was, it was a little, you know, the takeoff was rough. rough. A lot of turbulence. But, right, you know, right, right. But, but like now, there's more, and I mean, again, it's not a word that you've used, but like, we couldn't even mention your dad. No. Without the, the you could the rage was palpable. Because mm-hmm. my brother's a hothead, mm-hmm. right? You know, and so fire, fire, fire. You know, yeah. but but like we can mention him now. We can t- where you're just like, yo, that's not story didn't go down like I thought. Right. Yeah. And and and, and again, it's it's one of those ones that I it's it's a daily. I mean it. I deal with it. That I dealt with it before you got here. I will deal with it after you leave. It, it's it's an ongoing, everyday 
sing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just, uh, I, I just try to take it little piece by piece and just try to make, I, there, okay, there's nothing I can do about that now. Mm -hmm. I, I can't stay there. Yeah. And maybe I can go visit every once in a while. Maybe <laughs> maybe have a bunk cake or something while I'm there. <laughs> Why or not? Yeah, you know. I have a bunk cake there. But I, I I have a wife and two kids now that are um are wanting just to be with me, and right. I can't and not be with you. With the raged like, version, right? Of you. Yeah, <laughs> they they want to be me. Hopefully, the fun daddy. Let's go do some stuff. Mm -hmm. So okay. I um. I, uh, I I just take it with that, and I just one day at a time. I think this is a perfect time to bring in the woman <laughs> who changed the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and then for the sake of the audience, um, how long have you guys been married together? Uh, Twenty-eight years. Wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. Incredible. That's incredible. amazing. There's hope, Kim. We're, we're going to be fine, Carla. <laughs> we're going to be There's fine. <laughs> I mean, I got scars. You know. I mean, I think it's great to hear um, black men's perspective without the father because we talk about us as women. Yes. And how that has affected us with not growing up with the dad. Yeah. But to listen to the other side of it, wow. Wow. And, you know, I wonder, too, before we segue to bring in this whole thing so we start folding in this family thing, mm -hmm. there was something that you mentioned when we were talking in the former podcast about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's something, you've not said this word, but as your sister, there's something that I've seen in you um, that I don't even know if you notice, and that is, like, when I hear you even think through or talk about your dad now though you're like still got rage it's just directed in different places right you right know? and i get that right because we part of the family so i know right, right you know right right, <laughs> so right i know right. what the deal is however there is a sense of almost forgiveness that i hear about you regarding your dad where it's just like there's some stuff that wasn't his fault right Right, and I, I totally agree with that. There is, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not it's not like it's not messy, right? It is messy. Yeah, it is. It's right? extremely and some messy. Of it, you know, and it is like some of the stuff is just, it's not good. Or is it? Right. However, but there's some stuff that actually wasn't his fault. Right, right. And, I, and it's so interesting now having context since birth with you, right? Yes. Because I came on the scene, I was just like, we about to be best friends. And you were like, bet you we won't. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know? it, it didn't start off good. It did not. <laughs> it, was, it was a little, you know, the takeoff was rough. Rough. A lot of turbulence. But, right, right, you know. right. But, but like now, there's more. And I mean, again, it's not a word that you've used, but like, we couldn't even mention your dad. No. Without the, like, you could, the rage was palpable. Mm hmm. Because my brother's a hothead, mm -hmm. right? You know, and so fire, 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 you know, mm -hmm. but, but like, we can mention him now. We can, t where you're just like, yo, that's not, the story didn't go down like I thought. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and again, it's, it's one of those ones that I, it's, it's a daily, I mean, it, I deal with it. That I dealt with it before you got here. I will deal with it after you leave. It, it's it's an ongoing, everyday thing, mm -hmm. and you know it just. Uh, I, I just try to take it little piece by piece and just try to make. I, there, okay. There's nothing I can do about that now. Mm -hmm. I I can't stay there. Yeah. And maybe I can go visit every once in a while. Maybe <laughs> maybe have a bunk cake or something while I'm there. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, you know. I have a bunk cake there. But I, I I have a wife and two kids now that are um are wanting just to be with me, and right. I can't and not with be you, with the it. raged like, version. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. they they want to be me. Hopefully, the fun daddy. Let's go do some stuff. Mm -hmm. So okay. I um. I, uh, I I just take it with that, and I just one day at a time. I think 
this is a perfect time to bring in the woman <laughs> who changed the story. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then for the sake of the audience, um, how long have you guys been married together? Uh, 28 years. Wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. Incredible. That's incredible. amazing. There's hope, Kim. We're, we're going to be fine, Carla. <laughs> we're going to be There's fine. <laughs> I mean, I got scars. <laughs> no. I mean, I think it's great to hear um, black men's perspective without the father because we talk about us as women. Yes. And how that has affected us with not growing up with a dad. Yeah. But to listen to the other side of it, wow. Wow. And, you know, I wonder, too, before we segue to bring in this whole thing so we start folding in this family thing, there was something that you mentioned when we were talking in the former podcast about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there's something, you've not said this word, but as your sister, there's something that I've seen in you um, that I don't even know if you notice, and that is, like, when I hear you even think through or talk about your dad now though you're like still got rage it's just directed in different places right you right know? and i get that right because we part of the family so i know right, right you know right right, <laughs> so right i know right. what the deal is however there is a sense of almost forgiveness that i hear about you regarding your dad where it's just like there's some stuff that wasn't his fault right Right, and I, I totally agree with that. There is, I, I don't know. If, I mean, it's not it's not like it's not messy, right? It is messy. Yeah, it is. It's right? extremely and some messy. Of it, you know, and it is like some of the stuff is just, it's not good. Or is it, right. However, but there's some stuff that actually wasn't his fault. Right, right. And, I, and it's so interesting now having context since birth with you, right? Yes. Because I came on the scene, I was just like, we about to be best friends. And you were like, bet you we won't. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know? it, it didn't start off good. It did not. <laughs> it, was, it was a little, you know, the takeoff was rough. rough. A lot of turbulence. But, right, you know. right. But, but like now, there's more. And I mean, again, it's not a word that you've used, but like, we couldn't even mention your dad. No. Without the, the, you could, the rage was palpable. Mm hmm. Because my brother's a hothead, mm-hmm. right? You know, and so fire, 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 you know, yeah. but, but like, we can mention him now. We can, t- where you're just like, yo, that's not, the story didn't go down like I thought. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and again, it's, it's one of those ones that I, it's, it's a daily, I mean, it, I deal with it. That I dealt with it before you got here. I will deal with it after you leave. It, it's it's an ongoing, everyday thing, mm-hmm. and you know it just. Uh, I, I just try to take it little piece by piece and just try to make. I, there, okay. There's nothing I can do about that now. Mm-hmm. I I can't stay there. Yeah. And maybe I can go visit every once in a while. <laughs> maybe maybe have a bunk cake or something while I'm there. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, you know. I have a bunk cake there. But I, I I have a wife and two kids now that are um are wanting just to be with me, and right. I can't and not be with you, with the raged right, version, right? Of you. Yeah, <laughs> they they want to be me. Hopefully, the fun daddy. Let's go do some stuff. Mm-hmm. So okay. I um. I, uh, I I just take it with that, and I just, one day at a time. I think this is a perfect time to bring in the woman <laughs> who changed the story. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, now we are here with the matriarch of the, fa- uh, the, matriarch of the family, Jennifer Lindsay. Welcome, Hello. welcome. It's my sister. And um, I have to tell y'all, because y'all don't necessarily know this, but just so you know. Here's why we love Jen, okay? God bless her. I don't know if Jen knew what she was coming into, okay? Like, my brother's one piece of it. But as y'all know, we're attached to other human beings in the family, and sometimes the families are colorful. And we knew the family was colorful. I'm actually a little bit curious, and maybe I'm going to ask this, not right away, but I'm going to ask, like, how you told Jen about us? 
you know, because that, that's a thing, you know, and then drama unfolds, right, as you we've talked about in some of the other episodes. But, yeah, she comes in. Why we love Jen is I don't care what is going on. Jen is here. House is on fire. Jen's here. Okay. Someone fell off of a roller coaster. Jen is here. Okay. Lost all the money in the stock market. Where's Jen? Where's Jen, nephew? Yeah, Jen right. is here. <laughs> Jen's here. Jen's here. Right. Stable. We we ate the food. Where was Jen? Here. I was eating next to you. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and and as as we're learning from hearing, you know, a little bit from Michael, think about it. The the key word that Michael used about how he was feeling was rage. And somehow the divine crosses your path with one of the naturally calmest people on the planet that I know. Yes. And his rage doesn't disrupt you and her calm doesn't disrupt you. I wouldn't. Okay, so we're about to get into it. Just go ahead, break it down. How's y'all meet? Let's get into it. Uh, I would, um, for me personally, um, the when we first met and we started dating... Uh, Whoa, bro! You done skipped over the intro page. Oh, okay, I'm you sorry. You can't start the story in chapter three. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> when we first met, I was actually dating somebody, so I wasn't even <laughs> interested. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, he could have been, but ugly. It would have made a difference. Okay, <laughs> okay, because yeah, you were focused. I was with somebody. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh wait a minute! You gonna leave all that out? Uh oh. Yeah. So nephew, this is where we just where we just kind of you gonna leave all that out? That'd be chapter two. Okay. <laughs> okay. We gotta go back to chapter one. T. And uh, <laughs> how we initially met was um, when y'all were staying with Aunt Marty. Mm. Yeah. Him and Ray got together in some mischief. That sounds about right. Michael's always involved. He's like close by. Like I didn't set the cornfield on fire. Is this the hour? I'm what just, the, what I'm the just, heck is this? I'm just like you weren't. You didn't set the cornfield on fire, but you were there. <laughs> you didn't rob Josh's, but you were there. What is this? It's just interesting. That's all. <laughs> Go ahead, Jen. So, him and Ray started playing with Ray's black book, old girlfriends, people from Shelton. So, uh, <laughs> he's like, I've been here a while. Let me meet some people. And so they called me up. And I had not talked to Ray in about two years. Mm -hmm. And we just had like a quarrel. And that was like the end of it. Aunt Marty, when I called to apologize, said, look. Wait, one second. He one second. You, one second. He'll what, call you back. One second. What's that? What's what? What's that? What? You ain't telling the whole story. I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> you fill in the gaps. Any gaps she got, you fill in. Yeah, right. well, okay. we're just here now. Yeah, we just here. Well, yeah. I'm just here. Okay, all right. So, so yeah, I hadn't talked to him, so I was surprised to actually get a call from him, and I was not particularly pleased because of the way Aunt Marty talked to me when I called. Yes, years before. So, Clearly, yes. So I was like, you know what, whatever. And so when he called, I said, "Well, who the hell died?" Yeah. And he's like, "Wait, what?" And I'm like. Somebody had to die for you to call me and talk to me in two years. He's like, well, my cousin's in town, and he's been here about a month, and he's looking for somebody to show him around town. And I told him I'm not a flipping tour guide. Mm -hmm. Call somebody who gives that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I read him the riot act and, and hang up on him. And a couple hours later, I was like, you know what? That was pretty messed up. I think I'll call him back and apologize. And... Uh, he wasn't there anymore, but Mike was. Mm -hmm. And Mike answered the phone, and I said, well, you must be Mike. I said, well, I'll give you directions to my house, and you come over, and, and we'll meet, and I'll show you around a little bit. And that's how we met. And then, like, two weeks later, I dumped my boyfriend. Wow, that's a <laughs> good first impression. Right? Okay, Red right, Tail <laughs> so. That's a good first impression. No, that was In Ohio, I'm Michael, but in Virginia, I'm Mike. Yeah, that was that what that was during the time I had that little Chevy Sprint and uh, the the blue with the, the speaker box in the back. 
So she heard me coming before I ever yeah. got there. So that, I think, is what actually... You think that's what kind of brought it home for yeah, you? Yeah, I think it was. You're the ladies in. Yeah. <laughs> On one of them. <laughs> so y'all meet, y'all start dating. <laughs> Oh, let me not make sure I'm slamming on the table because it's all good. Yeah. So y'all start meet, meeting, y'all are dating. What initially, once y'all realize, oh, it might be something there. Michael, what was it about Jen that you kind of initially were like, I kind of like that. And Jen, what was it about Michael that you were like, there might be something there. Besides, he was good looking. He seemed pretty pulled together. Did he? <laughs> Just kidding. <I'm> so- <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> I mean, he, he had his own car, and he had, you know, skill set under his belt. And it, I mean, you weren't working at the time, but you were working on getting on at the Black IP, which was cooking, which is what he wanted to do. So, yeah, we uh, we just kind of hit it off because he had been heading in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So. What was it for you? She let me be me. A lot of the relationships that I had had before, it was like, if I went anywhere, the girlfriend was like, oh, can I go with you? No. Mm-hmm. No, you cannot. I'm going to play basketball. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, well, I can sit. No. Mm-hmm. No. All right, well, when do you swing by afterwards? Nah, mm-hmm. probably not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably not. And she just let me be me. I was like, just don't smother me. Just, I'll come back. Just, I just need my space. Mm-hmm. And she gave it to me. I mean, and, and it sounds too like Jen knew who she was too. Right. Yeah, yes. Because I think I told you pretty early on I was looking to get married and settle down, and if that was going to scare you away, see ya. She did. So she did. He mm-hmm. knew what my intentions were early on. Mm-hmm. Probably month, month and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And did that scare you? Um. Or did you hear like okay? You know, I it did. It. It. Didn't at first, but uh, when she got pregnant with Kimberly, I was terrified. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was like... Oh. What was it that terrified you um, in retrospect? Because you might have one answer for then, but looking back now, 20-some years, back when you look back, what was it that you were actually afraid of? Being my father. Yeah. Yeah. Because still at that time, uh, I still had a lot of rage for him. I mean, the truth didn't start coming out until I came back to Columbus. Um, So, yeah, I I just, I did not want, I don't, I didn't want there to be a child that was related to me that didn't know who I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's pause for a second because I want to get into that. But I also want to address the possible elephant in the room that we're also looking at an interracial couple in the South in like what, 91? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 90, 91. So what was that like? Because I know, because too, because I know you're also having this experience of. You got you're a young black man in this loud car with this music pulled over by police and those that kind of thing. Now enter in, you're that guy with that car pulled over by the police and Jen sitting in the car. Right. Um it 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 wasn't never I didn't get pulled over too much once we started dating. I, I think I started calming down by that point, but definitely like Going out to like the grocery store, Walmart, Kroger's, that was awful. Talk to <laughs> us. Talk to us about what that was like. It was like an awkward tension. It, it was a lot of just, it, you, depending you, on where we were and the the people that were around us. Some of them were like couldn't give two bits. Some of them you can feel them staring mm-hmm. from behind. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I mean, so, I mean, we. We recognize early on, even before we got married, we made sure to address that, is that people are going to stare. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're obviously in in a position to be unique, mm-hmm. especially at that time. Um, and how did it feel, like, feeling-wise, how did that feel for you, and how did it feel for you? And I think these are some of the things, like, 
nobody ever asks, mm -hmm. you know, an interracial couple, like, what did this feel like? Particularly for both of you, because I'm sure it felt a way. And a, a real quick, a common thing I'm noticing, too, is you guys are addressing these things early in the relationship. You're not letting it kind of just linger and fester. You're addressing it, but collectively problem solving and going through it together. Yeah. Get, just... Uh, yeah, each circumstance is different. So if we're just storing somebody staring, we just be like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless somebody was confrontational, which we did go to the DMV that one time, and uh, this guy was hitting on me at the door, selling paraphernalia or whatever. And uh, he's, he's hitting on me, and he's like, come with me or something, or, you know, we can go grab a cup of coffee. And I said, dude, I'm married. And he's like, is it because I'm black? I said, no, my husband is black. And he's like, but are you happy? I was like, oh, my wow. goodness. <laughs> Why would those two things right. be a right. thing? It, yeah. was, it was so weird. So people are, every person that encounters us is different about how they feel about it, how they see it, mm -hmm. how they think it works out behind closed doors. So unless they're confrontational about it, we typically don't address it. We just go about business. Because we talked about this the other night is that, I clearly see he's black. I'm mm. not blind and I'm not stupid. But I'm like, at the end of the day, I don't see him as a black man. I see him as my husband, a good man, a provider, a father. So the fact that he's black doesn't even come into it unless somebody addresses it specifically. Did it ever bother you either how people might be toward him or how people might be toward you regarding y'all dating? Like, did it ever... It didn't really be a whole lot of issue. Like I said, most people just stare because they're uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. like you said, they don't want to ask. Right. Or like, are you together? Or We would go places and even still now, sometimes we go places and there'll be like one check or two. Mm, interesting. Like, I'll be like, um, yeah, we're both wearing rings. We both came in together. Unless it's an affair. And if it is, he's paying. Right, right. <laughs> like, dirt. <Right. laughs> you know, but, the, I mean, everybody yeah. comes from a different space, and we just kind of deal with it as it happens. And so, yeah, it, it just depends on the circumstances where we're at and what their opinions are. But, like I said, we just don't antagonize it any. And I, I think people are curious, but I don't think they ask. Mm -hmm. It was a little different for me only because I had gone from the you know the typical angry black male to now the typical angry black married to mm. a white woman yeah male so what did it feel like for you it was um i think a lot of it was self-induced but i i have my head is on the swivel at all times because mm -hmm. i just don't know it's almost like i know it's coming i just don't know when and from where yeah did you find that it came from all areas? It came from, it came from the only area, and the one area I didn't expect it from. Which was, um, let's be honest, family, family, family. Mm. Uh, the place where you're supposed to find solace and peace and support. You know, it yeah, I, did it, not feel it. I did not catch that one. So how did y'all deal with that? Like, did y'all talk about that together? And then how did you deal with it? Because that's hard. Mm -hmm. and I, went to, <laughs> I went to what I always do. Rage. rage. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then how did the, the main temperaments that y'all both have, how did y'all, how did those temperaments work together with that feeling? And, and that thing, because like when it's family... You know, I, it's not like it's a quick fix or like you can be like, well, I'll just unplug from that. Right. I, I blew up. I, I blew up. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't looking back on it. It wasn't the right. But. But that plays into let me let you be who you were. Right. Stop you from feeling. Because I genuinely feel like if you're feeling something, that's your authentic self. And if I don't see it or understand it, that's not my place to change it mm -hmm. or tell you it's wrong mm -hmm. because that's that's where you are. And I'll say just from an, from an outside perspective, one of the things I think that we have appreciated regarding you being married to our brother mm -hmm. is 
there, you know, I think, and, and if we can just be honest and direct, mm-hmm. I think one of the things that is sometimes discussed is well, when you see an interracial couple or if you see a group of friends and this like a multiracial group of friends, sometimes what people defer to is, well, if the white person acts black, you know, or then it's acceptable or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But, but what was always beautiful about you is you were authentically who you were and you never interrupted how he was. Right. Or how it was just like, and then he didn't interrupt how you were. Like, nobody was code switching. It's like, this is who we are, and this is how we show up, and one didn't get in the way of the other. Yeah. Yep. And I get the essence of that stability. Like you said, Jen is here, and even before going into your relationship and going into your marriage, you were already anchored in your identity, your voice, who you were, and not dissuade from all these other things that might uh, affect a person's relationship typically. Right. So you were already rooted and grounded. And I think that was powerful. Yeah. yeah. So how did y'all work through the stuff? Um, one day at a time. Yeah. It's, it's one incident at a it time. One, one, day. one day at a time, one incident at a time. Uh, just. And really working off the one to ten scale. So if we're having an argument and I'm like, There's not a right or a wrong. It's like, how important is this to you? If it's a 10 for you and it's a 2 for me, why are we fighting? Mm -hmm. So, and if we're... Wait, say more about that. If it's a 10 for him and a 2 for you and you said, why are we fighting? So what does that mean for you? How do you manage... So if there's a level of... Let's say we're looking at a new car soon. For him, that's a 10. For me, I could take a new car. I could leave it. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to go with what he said because... It's really important. More important yeah, to him. Yeah. And if that's where he's headed, then I just should support him in getting there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's no need to be like, well, this is stupid or, you know, we should wait or, you know. It'd be like, okay, this is where you're at, so how do we get there? Mm-hmm. And we typically use that in just about every fight. We I, I use fight, but, I mean, just really arguments or heated discussion. I, but we were laughing about this is we had to ask the kids if we had taught them good fighting skills because we've never really had an argument or fight in front of the kids mm. and uh, we were like if we're not fighting in front of them how are they learning how to fight fair mm. or evenly or but we apparently have taught them enough mm-hmm. to and they've seen us have discussions where we're like mm, that doesn't sound right or why are you doing this or so I think just by negotiating on a low level, we've taught them fair skills and, and negotiations and understanding of how to how to rate the arguments that are going on. Because, I mean, argument just sounds harsh, but I mean, if you have two opposing opinions, then debate. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, but that's how we typically solve it. If it's way more important to one person than the other, let's just not even discuss it. Let's just go with the one that's more important. Now, with this family thing, I'm thinking about this in two different ways now. If part of the challenge, one of the greatest challenges was family, and then you're coming in with some funky family stuff, and then y'all have created a new family, what does that look like in the early years? When you're coming in, you're still enraged. You still have one idea of your mom, one idea of your dad. You got a child now. Children didn't necessarily picture any of this. Right. And you're in it now. Right. And you're young. Yeah. Because how old were you when you married? You were 21. 20. Yeah. And I was 19. Because you uh, went out with Ray to the movies. Yeah, that was that. And there was beer at the movies, so I couldn't go. And you asked me like 20 minutes beforehand, you don't want to go, did you? Oh my, I got two kids at home. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Said there were issues at the beginning of the match. Right. Okay. That's your- I, there's a learning process. Okay. <laughs> he went to go watch his cowboys play on the big screen where he knew I couldn't go. I said I was sorry. <laughs> and you've worked through this. You've I, I said I was sorry. <laughs> we, we did work through that. Yeah. What's so powerful see. about this is these are two young people at the time who even despite these issues where most people would just be like, all right, I'm done. Like, we're, I'm out of this. Like, I don't want this relationship anymore still evolving through that and i'm hearing these ideas of positive communication and conflict resolution which i think are two pillars that hold a relationship together um and even to be that young and you guys to 
handle those things maturely, I think is really powerful. Um, even as I talk to peers um, in my age range and I'm in my upper 20s, uh, people are still struggling with those things. For you guys to be significantly younger than that and still be able to do that, I think is really powerful. I think both of us just were very strong characters. Mm -hmm. And my background was not even remotely close to his. But I moved every three years. So I knew I knew once I started approaching adulthood, there were things I wanted and a time frame I wanted it in and an amount of time I was not willing to spend mm -hmm. wasting. Because I met, I met new people every three years. I had new friends every three years. And before the internet, if you didn't have grandma's address, when you moved, you lost your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So it wasn't like you could go back stateside and find them on the internet. It, you know, you had to find somebody who they knew who was not moving ever and use that address to get to them. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, like I said, I told them early on, I was like, I'm not trying to waste anybody's time. So if this isn't where you're at, then let's not even do this. And then we did that again because I got pregnant with Kimberly a month after we got our marriage license. Wow. And um, were you scared? I wasn't scared. I was kind of excited because I, I knew at some point I wanted to be a mom. So mm -hmm. it was exciting for me, but mm. I was a little hesitant because I was like, I didn't know where he was at. Yeah. And I didn't want him to think that I was like trapping him in. Yeah. So one of the things I told him, I was like, hang on to this marriage license. And if you want to stay, stay, we'll get married. And if you don't, take it and run. Mm. And the last day that the certificate was married was valid. We went and got married. Nice. The last day? The last day. He was like, wow. but I, I mean, I wanted him to t have time to think about it and mm. be like, this is, and I was like, we're not, if we do this. We're not getting divorced. There's no starter marriage. This isn't like try it out and see if it works. And and that's kind of on par with what he said. He was attracted to you initially was the fact that you gave him space. You gave him time to be himself and you weren't like overbearing and, you know, things like that. So that's kind of interesting that that parallel yeah. kind of rolled back around. And I'm sitting here and I'm like exchanging looks with our, you know, two piece podcaster here, Carla and I are eyeballing each other like, what the F, right? What the F, the F, and I'm like, this is like, I'm trying to, because it's my, like, we're supposed to sit here and be like, cool, cool, and this, and question, and answers, and stuff. But I'm really sitting, and like, I know you. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's almost like getting to know y'all, which is a whole different thing. And it's, it, it's blowing my mind, because this don't look anything like what we saw this sounds nothing like the narrative you hear mm -hmm. regardless about relationships you never hear this particularly about interracial relationships ever mm -hmm. ever and so i'm just listening to this like there is on paper no way that this situation should have lasted 28 years like you remove everything else 19 and 21 Going like, into this, what? there's no <laughs> way this was ever supposed to like yes. on paper. Like the whole world was kind of like betting against y'all, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? And like we sent, came in, doppelganger house, <laughs> ate all your food, yeah, moved the furniture around, yeah. these gangbusters, and and then here we are. So it just occurred to me that all the times we shoot crap around the table. And we've never, never really discussed how we got together in the first place. Never. And all the backstory behind it has just kind of been accepted at the at face value. So So we're twenty eight years later, two adult kids. Kim is realizing I'm the aggressor because <laughs> I've hung up on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you did. And like and I mean and, and it's just so much functionality in a world where we're used to dysfunction. So this actually looks like the anomaly, but it's the thing that's underneath what everybody says they want, but they haven't done the work to do it. And then y'all do the work all the time. So the next thing we're gonna do is bring in the kids because we gotta see the product. But before that, I have a question. You're 28 years in, like this means in a couple of years, y'all will have three decades together. Yes. Which means you are already at the point where you've spent more of your lives together than apart. Yes. So yes. in looking 
back on the 28 years on this day in this moment, what would you say are the lessons that you've learned in this family that you've created, in this marriage and in this family that you created? What have you learned either about family or what have you learned about yourselves in the context of this family that you've created? I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> that was really deep and very broad. <laughs> um, I think really you have to be a whole person to jump into a long-term relationship with somebody, whether you get married or not. You have to be your whole person. And we laugh about this. I, I tell my, I don't really need you. I, I just want you, <laughs> which is different. So there's there's never a point in time where there's one dominating over the other. Like, like I don't know where you think you're going to go without me. Because both of us are very whole people. We both have our own personalities, our own wants, our own wishes. And a lot of that melds in the middle. But the stuff that doesn't, we work out based on which one is more important. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's probably one of the most important things we taught our kids is you can't jump into a relationship and think, I'm going to bring 50 and they're going to bring the other 50 and make me whole. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't work. So in the times where he needs his space, it's provided. When I need my space, it's provided. And if there's a disagreement, we're just like rock, paper, scissor. Who's got the higher number? Mm. You know, Of that zero to 10. Mm. Of zero what? to yeah. 10. Yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's a wide span between it, there's no need to even discuss it. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's a five for both of us, we're like, then why are we even here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe we just need to scrap both of these and pick a whole nother route. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's ongoing. It's negotiation. Uh, marriage is definitely work every day. Because mm -hmm. every day brings new problems, new, new insight, new perspectives. Mm -hmm. So as you're growing as a person, you just want to make sure you're growing together. And then the most important thing is to pass that on to our kids so that they can continue to have those healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. Wow. So. Yeah. Wow, I'm sitting over here, like, leaning in. Like, yeah. <laughs> I got to get all of this. Yeah. That is some good stuff. See, we just didn't think But we to had start out at 19 yeah, and 21. That's the part, Carla, that's blowing my mind. It's like, Let's be let's like be real yeah, about this. Real. I'm, I'm not person. I'm not the most mature. I thought I was gonna be way more mature than this by the time I hit this age. <laughs> and I'm like, I think I've maxed out. I think this is <laughs> it right here. And a lot of I'm like, listen to y'all like, yeah, I don't know if I got that in me. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, this is like crazy that y'all figured that out that early we're not that mature and yeah, for that yeah, long that because so, when you get to the kids they're going to tell them that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's going to come out they're just that, waiting I the as soon as like, I get they on are, camera they're adults <laughs> but they are not mature yeah I'm ready for that yeah. and Michael I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in two really quick stories okay and for uh, this this is what it explains hopefully it will like, Makes sense. Okay. The first one is, is is that when Kimberly first came to me to ask about my father, the rage came out. Mm -hmm. I, look. Oh, and let's put context in this. Give the context for... So Kimberly wanted to go back and kind of do the DNA to figure out about, and we're going to hear more about that, but uh, she wanted to find out about the paternal side of her family. Yes. The, she, she tells wanted you to she do, wants to do that, and you're like... And I am absolutely 100% against it. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jen had actually done some, uh, and Kim, Kimberly and Jen got together. They shared it. I said, you can share it. Um, I want no part of this. So it goes on, it goes on. Kimberly has an opportunity to go to one of my dad's family reunions. And um, I said, absolutely not. And against everything that I said, she was like, N -n -n -n. I think I said, okay, well, you can go, because I can't stop you. You're an adult now. You're in your own house. I said, uh, you, but don't give out my name, don't give out my number, nothing. I want no part of this. And I actually and, talked you into getting a couple of pictures. Right. Older pictures that were nondescript by location. Right. To share. So, 
uh, she she um, did that. Uh, she brought back a number of somebody I didn't even know. I didn't even think twice about it. I threw it on my desk, left it. Then the stuff happened with mom and stuff started falling off and I'm listening to her tell stories and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not right. And that's not right. And that's not right. So um, I am eternally grateful for her. She had the strength to stand up to her father mm -hmm. to do what she believed is right. Yep. I, I can't be more grateful. Yeah. I can't be more proud. Mm -hmm. Second story. So when this COVID thing hit, uh, I was immediately let go at my job. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Like COVID hit go that on. day. It gave me a nice little note. Thank you. But don't come back, basically. Mm -hmm. Um I'm driving home wondering what I'm going to do, how the, I'm going to make this work now. And I pull into the driveway and the front lawn is soaked. The main water line has broke. Mm. I am like, I now have no job. I've got this water line break. The city doesn't give you time on that. Yeah. Like three days and they, they cut your water off. They cut your water off. I have no idea how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to pay for this. I call my son. I say, look, I was just let go of my job. The water, the main water line break is broken in the front yard again. I don't have it. My son, without missing a beat, says, take what you need. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And y'all did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all did that. Once again, despite the mm -hmm. examples despite your family, which you didn't expect, right. being against you in certain aspects, creating a product of children that had your back like that is amazing. It wow, is. That's amazing. I, that's all I got. So we, <laughs> what a testimony amazing. from rage to reward. Yes. yes absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to do, the next thing is we're going to bring the kids in, but I actually, I'm going to deviate from the plan. But I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do in a second. Okay. So, oh. so yes. this is very much on par with how Ken does. <laughs> very spontaneous. Yeah. <laughs> so we now we gotta bring in the kids. Absolutely. We gotta Absolutely. bring in the kids. Okay. So we're pausing. We'll be out. This for the kids. <laughs> no, 